Trace Blaine. Trace Blaine. Trace Blaine. Hey. Okay, I figured out my key to success. Now I'm locked in. Yeah. I learned how to open doors like a locksmith. I'm up. Welcome back. You are now locked in with DK and Atwood. I'm Atwood. It's killer to my left, DK. We are on the mats here in the next Element Academy in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And today, uh, we're going to talk about something that's important in I mean, really every aspect of life, right? But um, yeah, especially life, in martial everything. arts, yeah. which is consistency. Being and I consistent. Think you can speak to this, um, I mean, certainly more than me. Uh, but more than most people, right? Yeah, being yeah. a former professional fighter and everything. So, um, I mean, well, it's you know, it's not just being a professional fighter as well. It's like you know, I, when I started training, I wasn't a professional fighter. You know, mm-hmm. I was just training because I loved it and I fell in love with it, and I just didn't let other things outside of jujitsu fighting get in the way of me getting better. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and you're in the military too. Yeah. So, so I, that that's consistent on a whole man on, on a whole other level. I'm glad. So, yeah. So I, I I'm glad I was in the military, but there are times where I often think back of the times where I was like if I wasn't in the military, what could have happened? You know, mm. cuz I would have been able to move to train at places that I could train at yeah. and all these things, you know. Maybe take some more opportunities. Make yeah, exactly because you know, I was talking about this this morning in um my I had an 8 a.m. class, um, and I was just saying how how big of a pain in the ass it was to people that didn't really understand what I was trying to accomplish or what I was doing. That was in the military. You know, right. people were like, oh, you figured they'd, like, support you and want you to. Dude, it wasn't, man. Right. It was, like, sabotage almost, mm-hmm. you know. Like, me, I'd get a fight offer, and – the you know i'd have to go to my supervisor hey man i got a, this fight offer and well am i able to take off during this week or whatever you know oh uh, we got to exercise or you know meaning we have to like practice war you know and be out in the field and all this other stuff for which you know getting out of that is like nobody wants to let you out of it because yeah. they got to go deal with it so you need to deal with the suck too you know mm-hmm. so um you know, it would just kind of be sabotage. And the, I mean, even when I first started fighting, we weren't allowed to fight on base. Or the the guys that were on base weren't allowed to fight. So Army guys weren't around, allowed to fight downtown, I think. Or maybe they were. So we were in, we were in, um, uh, fair, near fair, right outside of Fairbanks, Alaska, when I first started fighting. And some of the Army guys, you know, they'd fight, but the Air Force, we weren't allowed to it at the beginning and I had to go through all this, like all these hoops in order to get us approved. Right. Mm -hmm. I I had never fought before. I was only a E four, which is a senior airman in the air force, like very low, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I did all this research, took it up my chain of command, took it up my chief. My chief was like really cool and supported me and, uh, went all the way up to, Brigadier General, which is a one-star general. Okay. Um, so you have four-star generals mm-hmm. as well. So he's a one-star general, and um, he was in charge of the whole base. And he was like, all right. You know, I just presented him, like, there's people fighting on base and, like, other bases. Why are we the only – why can't we fight? You know, like, we're also military. We should be, you know, wanting to be the baddest. Like, we train to kill people. Right, right, right yeah. We let people ride four-wheelers, let people ride – motorcycles all that other stuff but i can't do a martial art or and f- yeah. compete in it you know after that I went up chain of command you know i got approved two weeks later had my first fight so you know it was had had my chief there had my first sergeant there which was you know higher ups in my chain of command and just like i mean it was a knockdown drag out war you know yeah but that could have just been Obsolete. It teared me. Yeah, yeah. Well, completely, yeah. Right? It made me stop and be like, oh, well, I can't fight, so no reason to train anymore. Right. And if you weren't in the military, I mean, obviously none of that even matters. You just right. do what you want. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people, I think, run into these roadblocks bo- with training, whether it's their significant other. Mm. I've seen that happen. I mean, I've been in this industry for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen where people's spouse don't want them to train. 
you know? And I'm like, so what if my thing was, hey, babe, I'm, we're doing, uh, you know, going out to the bar with the boys. You know, it's, it's Tuesday night with the boys, you know what exactly. I'm saying? It's like, but you're going to a bar, you know, to get drunk and do everything, do these different things, you know, like this is part of your livelihood. You know, this can give you confidence to protect your family. Yep. Your wife should feel confident when she goes out to, let's say you go to the Marsh Walk. For people that don't know, like the Marsh Walk can get a little rowdy sometimes. It can. Down and at so, old hot fish club. Yeah. So people trying to, man, they'd be all spicy on that tequila. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they can jump. Uh, man. But anyway. Got the Columbia shirts on. And yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. I got the Columbia, <laughs> you know, fishing shirts on. Yeah. PFG. <laughs> Anyways, man, so it's like uh, when you, you know go you out know. with your your wife or a significant other, man, you sh- you you're protect you can protect right. her no problem, you know? And yeah. I mean, plus like you know, there's a big difference between not necessarily even just coming here and doing anything, you know, whether it's boxing, well, what you do here as well, but or any just kind of martial arts working, or working just going out. to the gym going yeah. to the gym consistent yeah. being consistent huge at the gym. difference in doing that with your body than going out and, and to the and, bar and yeah and getting drunk and, and i get it man like i like to have a good time but i just can't see myself man i feel like a turd head if i find myself you know if i was like going to the bar every day yeah you yeah know, like i've never really been a drinker i've always kind of felt out of place at, yeah. i mean don't get me wrong i've had my fair share of nights at Hot Fish Club, all right? But <laughs> but uh but I've always kind of felt like out of place. Um but I, I think I get totally what you're saying. I think most people watching um would agree that, you know, I think it's a little silly for a significant other to not like uh something that you're doing that not only betters yourself but could could better be your beneficial family. for them as well. Yeah, you know, absolutely, man. I'm you're such a you're a much nicer person. Mm-hmm. You know, when you've you're training and you're you know being choked by other humans. Yeah, yeah, getting you humbled know, or, every day or choking other people mm-hmm. or you know going practicing armbar, not literally choking. They tap, obviously, right, but yeah, you know, it's like man, training jujitsu is fun, and especially when you start learning and you start figuring out stuff. You know, it mm-hmm. becomes fun. Yeah, you know, it becomes like. You know, it's not a chore. You know, sometimes you know, in the at the early stages, it becomes oh, it feels it feels like a chore, right? Because yeah. you're just like, damn, I I'm gotta go sore as hell. I gotta eat right. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, I mean, be honest with you, I still haven't started eating right yet. Yeah, but, but but that's that's another cool thing that I like though. I burn enough calories where I can eat like absolutely, shit. Absolutely. <laughs> but bad. before you come to training, you don't eat shit. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if you know you're going to train in a couple hours or whatever, mm-hmm. you're not going to eat some shit because you know it's going to make you feel like shit yep. before your training session. Yep. It's you know, so come it's, back up. Yeah, so it's like a, a never-ending circle almost. Like, it keeps us accountable. We're not going to go get trashed if we got a 8 8 We got to come train at 8 a.m. We're not right. going to get trashed or, you know, eat some crazy stuff, you know? But I don't know, man. It's just been... Um, that's it's something I've been wanting to talk about, you know, on here is just not l- letting roadblocks hinder your training or hindering your progression in anything, whether it's getting a promotion at, at, at your job, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's working your way up the ranks in fighting uh, or jujitsu or boxing, kickboxing or owning a business or something like that. Like, you know, don't, let roadblocks deter you you know Mm -hmm. and sometimes i think humans we let that happen a lot yeah yeah well we're easily discouraged you know what i'm saying it's like oh hit a robot probably not meant to be right right you know that's what people maybe i'll pray about it and a lot of times that's what happens you know yeah i agree i agree and you know going back to um you know the days where you don't really want to train um i haven't been doing this long enough to to say that i've had a lot of these moments but i've definitely had a few where i feel like those are the days where i really need to can feel myself getting better right like uh because there's 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 a lot of days where i'll leave here where 
Um, you know, we've talked about it before. Maybe you're a little demoralized because you just got ragdolled for 10 rounds or however yeah, many. Yeah, and you're driving home, driving right. home with the music off. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. windows like, down. It's raining. Windows still down, you know? And you're um, just like, <laughs> and you, yeah, oh, the radio's off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's also days where I, I leave here um, where I, I actually have that conversation with myself in the car. Like, you know, I felt like I got better today. Um, and... You know, I, I think jujitsu, I think it's kind of like hitting a speed bag, right? Like, it's not something that you're going to get better minute by minute. Like, it's it's in your, uh, I don't Muscle know. memory? Or yeah, yeah, but it's it, there's another word. I just can't think about it. Think of it. Something with neurological. But it's like, you, you get better. Like, the you do it today, you go to sleep, ways. you come yeah. back tomorrow, and you'll be better. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, not it's, like. It's like elasticity in your brain. You're, right. You're just building up that elasticity so it, the connection and the signal can transfer a whole lot faster. Like right. the way I used to do an arm bar 18 years ago is not what it's like, to, you know, now, right? Like yeah. it's so much more faster. So I can do it in my sleep probably, mm -hmm. you know? And it's because that, that memory and that muscle memory or the elasticity, like similar to what you were talking about, is built up in that. Yeah, and it know? takes days. It, it's not something you're going to notice like minute by minute, hour by hour, no. um, and a weeks, lot of times. Yeah, know? exactly. Yes. Like it, like in my case. Um, but yeah, it's it's the days where you come, and usually for me, it's a day after just getting my ass kicked, um, and I come back. It's like, well, you know, most time what I I'm tell myself was, well, that this, was in the gi. Maybe I'll have more. I'm luck. not going to let this you know? person kick my ass. Today. Right. Yeah. But there, dude, there's some people, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, like if they'll let you work, but if they want to, you're not going to be able to get anything off. 100%. Um, and then, you know, some days that happens, some days it doesn't. Um, but it's, it's the ones where I don't really want to be here where I feel like I get better. Yeah. Um, and whenever you experience a couple of those, it makes it easier to convince yourself, you know, well, last time that happened, you know, like. I was actually pulling things off that I've been uh, drilling in, in class and just it's haven't been able to get small live rules. Right, exactly. Small wins. Yeah. And that, you know, when I, that's what I try to tell our, our students, you know, I'm sure I've told you before, is like we have to have small wins every, you know, during our classes, you know. Maybe it's only somebody didn't pass our guard. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's only somebody didn't take us down. Maybe we just got a sweep. We were able to get a sweep or maybe – we were able to defend getting swept mm -hmm. or defend an arm bar, something so small and minuscule that like it, you know, we don't, it, it is like a, a, a it's a big win, right. You know, but it's a very small win in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. all that shit adds up to, yeah. I feel like I'm cursing a lot today. I apologize, <laughs> but it's just, I don't know. Yeah. This haven't said anything bad. I don't think. <laughs> no, that, that's bad. Whenever you have to question yourself, like, dang, like, did I really I? say anything bad? No. Nah. You know how many times I've done that on the air at work? Oh. Dude, I can only imagine. I've like, had a hot live, mic moment. Yeah. Live, and you're like, oh, my God, what did I Dude. just say? All right, so getting off track, I will tell you a little story about when I first got into radio, and I had a hot mic moment, okay? Um, I was trying to cut a promo for Bruno Mars, and everything in radio, a lot of the promos are like tongue twisters of some sort. There's a lot of, you know, if you have – like Bruno Mars, for instance, there's going to be a lot of things that like uh, words that will start with the same, same thing. So in this case, it was a bunch of T's. It was like, ta -ta 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 -ta, and I kept messing up. Right. And I didn't know my mic was on and I was recording it on the computer. <laughs> and so I got to the point of like, mother, who wrote this stupid? And I was going off. Right. So a couple minutes into it, my phone started blowing up oh and I just God. see like on these phones, we have the radio station, you have different buttons and they're all just flashing green. I'm like, wow. You know, Mix 97.7, hello, who's this? <laughs> like, hey, man, I just want to tell you, the last couple of minutes of your show have been extremely entertaining. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, your mic is on. I was like, oh, no, dude, he just hung up on him immediately. Was, is a Turned caller from mic outside? Off. Huh? From, from, is somebody from? Yeah, 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 it was a listener. A listener. So I'm in here trying to, to do this tongue twister of a, of a promotion. Oh, and talking the whole time. I'm talking shit. over whatever's playing on the air. Whether it's, you know, whether it's a song or a, a, an internet spot, I'm talking over all of it. And it just gets up. I started letting F-bombs go, bro. And That's, I thought I was going to get fired. I but didn't. you didn't. Huh? No, no. I called my boss. I was straight up with him. I was like, listen, man, this just happened. And he started laughing. 
He's like, uh, he's like, why don't you just go home for the night, man? You know, your shift you, is done. And you thought you're like, dang, I'm yeah. Man. So he calls me up later, and uh, he went and he found the audio, and he started playing it back to me, and just started laughing his ass off. And he's like, listen, man. It, it's happened before, believe it or not. He's like, yeah, you did say a bunch of stuff that can get us in trouble, but if nobody reports it, then you're good. I guess wow. nobody reported it because, wow. yeah. How crazy. much is a fine for, like, a drop and an F-bomb? Oh, dude, I don't even know, but I know it's – the FCC does not play, man. That's crazy, They man. do not play. But you know what's crazy now? That, like, they've gotten a little bit more lenient with things that you can play in songs. Like, if you listen at night, you'll hear, you know, they'll be saying bitch and uh, – Yeah. I've heard, I've heard yeah. ass and shit. Um, I've even heard uh, GD. Wow. Beyonce said it like twelve times in one of her songs. Wow. Maybe um, it was got. No, no, she said GOT. No, she's no, 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 no dog. Because I was listening to, I was like, this one, two, three. Uh, it was like twelve times the entire song. Oh, man. In one bar alone, she said it like five times. Like that's, GD, GD, GD. That's not cool. Man. Yeah, I know. Cool. But it's just things have changed a lot over the years. But yeah, that's yeah. a little. Radio story for you, but going back to consistency, or consistency. man, how long have you been in radio talking about consistency? Oh man, um, you've been in, well. There was like a two-year little hiatus you. because I got laid off at the end of 2020, and then came back like a year and a half later. So I'd say altogether, probably like eight, maybe nine years. Wow, something like what, that. What got you into that? So I was. Uh, in and out of working at restaurants, you know, it's a thing that a lot of young kids get caught up in growing Especially up here. Myrtle Beach. Yeah, in a yeah, tourist yeah. town. Like, I mean, um, you make $500 a weekend. I mean, you're like... Oh, dude. Whenever I was 16, 16 hours and made $500 dude, I was tips, I was 16 you know? pulling in probably $1,000 every two weeks. Wow. Uh, and for a 16-year-old in oh. high school, that's cake. Uh, you know, I was balling. Yeah. I mean, that was, what, 15 years ago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 16, you know, I was making like 17? I was making like eleven fifty an hour, which back then was good. Oh, wow. You know, well, here, a lot of people that, that, that might be watching from bigger cities and eleven fifty is like minimum wage, it's still not that well, here. I, mean, I think it's still like talk about like how long ago that was. You're 33? Well, yeah, yeah, this is whenever I was so if you were 16, good like 16 17, 17 years so ago, yeah. About, yeah, that's a long yeah. time ago, man. Um but so I got out of that and I was doing this carpet cleaning crap. Hated it, right? And um so I used to make music a long time ago with Jordan Penny and yeah. I end up while Who's I was the doing intro that, on our Yep, he does the intro, intro song uh which is called Locked In by the way. You can go stream yeah. it. Boom. Um So I was in there in the, the work van, I heard this guy on the radio. I was like, I know this guy. Like, I've met him during the music years. And so I knew I was friends with him on Facebook. I literally hit him up and asked him a question, and that's how it all started. Oh, wow. And it was like, dude, how did you get into that? And then so he was like, well, do you still live in Myrtle Beach? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, why don't you come by the station? Um, we've been looking for, like, a part-time paid internship. And no I was way. like, all right. So I went by the station a couple days later. By the time I had left that night, I had been on the air. He just threw me right on. And so I did that for a couple what? months. Yeah. So what do you mean? You're day one. Day one. I wow. got thrown on the air. Yeah. That's crazy. And man. that's just how it happened, dude. It just fell, fell just into. Just a natural. Yeah. The mic. And that also changed like, I mean, obviously it was a life changer for me, but it changed the way I look at things too. Like now I ask a lot more questions because it was asking a question that changed my life to begin with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I used to You'll be like, dude, the I just kind of like sit ask. back. Right. I would just kind of like sit back, let other people talk and try to like gain knowledge. Maybe somebody would ask the question I had or, or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, now I'm just, uh, I'll just ask a bunch of stupid questions. A lot of times it's stupid, but um, don't care, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's how I got into radio. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's uh. so the next, so when did you like start getting your own like little spot though? Immediately. So what? they made me the night guy. And so usually Atwood nights. Atwood at night. Yeah. It was Atwood at night. Man, yeah. Too bad you don't talk like this. <laughs> Hello, all you cats and chicks out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, nah, it's uh, usually the, the nighttime spot is, unless you're in like a big city, it's like the least listened to. So that's uh, where a lot of people get their start. Really? Yeah. And then it's. Uh, and the morning I, show is probably like the morning biggest. Morning show is the biggest. And then afternoon drive is the second biggest. Really? Um, yep, because ev morning show, everybody's on the way to work, on the way to school. Afternoon drive, everybody's on the way home from work, on the way home from school. Um, and then the two in between would be middays, which is where I'm at now. And then um, after that would be nights. So, um, okay. and I've done all of them. 
except for morning. I've, you know, jumped on the morning show with Adam from, from Gator, the country station, quite a bit, but um, never had my own morning show. But, you know, now I just, I'm back in it, but I, I do it part-time. So yeah. I made sure that uh, whenever I went back to them, they asked me to come back part-time. I, I threw them some stipulations like, well, I go to jiu-jitsu every day at noon. That's not going to stop. They're like, cool, cool. Cool. Uh, and there's some other things that are tied into it it's as well. It's so good, man, when you can have those type of little things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. I get paid great money for part-time work, and I, I can be here whenever yeah. I want. Yeah. So I can't complain about that. Yeah. Now that I, you know, now that we've been open going on five years now, and I, my plan was to have this place, like, have a good quality team by five years, and I feel like we're, you know, we're – we're there. There's yeah, probably a yeah, lot yeah. of little things that we can probably tune up a whole lot better. Always can tune up mm-hmm. um, stuff, but it feels like now it's like, man, when we first opened, I was teaching every class. Yeah, I was right. Teaching right. as many privates as I could because, like, I mean, you know, we I'm trying had, to get the ball rolling, man. Get the money get the ball coming rolling, in. You know? Plus, I have to. I have overhead now, right? Mm-hmm. I have an ex- big expense on top of my house, you know, that I have to pay yeah, for. Absolutely. And so, like, all the equipment, you know, and different things like that was. You know, and then we slowly started, you know, getting members and, you know, and things like that to where now it's like, now I have like a good quality team that, you know, this is their job now. Yep. Like I have two, two They're dudes. here every day, yeah. all day, every day. Two or three dudes that are here like all day, every day. You know, mm-hmm. obviously they get to leave when they want to, you know, and come and go as, as they want, you know, but for the most part, they just hang out here, you know, throughout yeah. the day and. You know, so if anybody's stopping in, they get to tell them some info or whatnot. And, you know, they can jump into any class they want to mm-hmm. as well, and they're getting to do what they want to do. You yep. know what I'm saying? And so you have a real loyal group here too. I've I've uh, realized that over the course of the time that I've been coming here, man. Like these people, obviously, you know, while they're here, they have nothing but good things to say. I mean, they're here training, right? But yeah. even when they're not here. Uh, whether it's seeing them interact with people on Facebook or whatever, like the things that they have to say about this place and the people that train here. um, That's something that I really admire about the place. And that, that makes it more comfortable for me too. You know, I don't want to go somewhere where they're like, ah, yeah, but that one guy there, you're that one instructor. Like, I don't like, I don't, I don't mess with him like, or whatever. Everybody here is cool, man. Um, And, and the core group of guys that you have coached, they're all quality dudes. Like Nick Juretic dude's a freaking beast. Um, I've never seen him fight except for the uh, the one competition. Very, yeah, that uh, uh, what's that freaking thing called? Rough and rowdy. Rough and rowdy. Um, but just listening to watch him teach class and and listening to his He's stories. An intelligent dude. Yeah, I mean, dude has a master's degree in accounting. Does That's he? Another thing that we I didn't, didn't even talk that. about. He's got a master's degree in accounting. Oh wow! And so, dude was in accounting, driving all the way to Jackson. Jacksonville or Jacksonville, North yeah. Carolina? No. Or uh Florida. No, somewhere in Jacksonville here or Jackson or it might okay. not even be that. But anyways, he was driving like all the way up there and doing kettlebells, closing his door, doing kettlebell workouts in his office, you know. Oh wow. And uh then, you know, how I me and Nick came about, you know, or how he came to be an instructor here is he made a comment on Ed Milet's uh, post on Instagram. Ed Milet is, uh, if you haven't uh, listened, check out the Ed Milet show. Um, very, mo- he's a millionaire, I don't know, multimillionaire, and owns multiple businesses. He's helped, like, just listening to his podcast alone has helped me so much, hmm. you know, as a person. But anyways, he met, he, uh, posted on Ed Milet's thing about how he wanted to be the best trainer in the world. And I was like, I shot him. I was like, Nick, what? Let me shoot this dude a message. I thought he was like an accountant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought he was, I didn't even know what he Did was Did you doing. know he was local? Yeah, I've known oh, okay. Nick for, you know, since okay, he was, got you. you know, when I think graduated high school. Oh, but you know, just didn't know that he was uh I didn't know that the he was training. pursuing, you know, training gotcha. people. You know what I'm saying? I had heard he had did, uh, he was helping people he was running like a little boxing thing out of his garage for a little, a couple people. Mm-hmm. So I messaged him. I was like, yo dude, I was like, I was like, Ed Milet's awesome. He's the person that helped motivate me to, 
you know, open my business and, you know, get the ball rolling at that. And then mm -hmm. we just started talking. And I was like, man, like, if you want to coach some boxing, dude, like, come by the academy and all. Started going through. And if he wanted a place to train some people, he could use the mats in this area. So now I was like, man, he does personal training out of here. He does boxing privates out of here. He does, you know, uh, teaches our boxing classes as well uh, mm -hmm. three days out of the week. And then two days out of the week, Austin teaches our boxing in the morning. And so if all, they just flip flop because both of them that are here most of the time, and right, so right. they can they feed off each other, which frees me up. Now I don't have to teach boxing in the mornings and the afternoon yeah. now, and so that's an extra five hours throughout the week that I can clear my schedule up. Yeah, you know, well, so. especially now that you have a newborn, you know. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and that plays and that's a big the thing. Role. Is like, man, I've as now that I have man, he's eight months old today. By the way, oh wow, crazy, wow. That went by quick. Quick, dude. And so eight months old today. And um, I'm able to be there for just every moment now. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was active duty military and I was gone, my daughter, you know, she's 18 now. She turned 18 this Saturday, and um, which is a big gap, I know, guys. I get it. <laughs> right? But um, I had her very young. You know, I was 20 two when she was born just turned 22 when she was born and um so now i'm 40 <laughs> and uh anyways man it's uh it's just crazy to see you know i'm you know go from where i missed a lot of her little first moments you know i was gone yeah. from the time she was six months old to you know like almost nine ten months old i was gone to honduras for three months did building a school right and so I didn't get to see her trying to walk. I didn't get to see her teething or hear her yeah. teething or different things like that. I didn't get to see her trying to figure out like climbing up on uh, up onto a step mm -hmm. or standing up, you know, using something to pull himself up. So it's it's really cool, man, to be able to be around, you know, my son and but another thing that's we're back on the consistency, that hasn't stopped me from being here. Right. No, yeah. You know, you still teach I, all well, if not well, majority still, of the jujitsu classes. I still classes. teach a lot of jujitsu classes mm -hmm. throughout the day. Like I've, I, I teach every Monday. Well, it's not really a teach every Monday, Wednesday, but I show up every Monday, Wednesday at eight a.m. for the breath work because I do it for myself, and then yeah. you know roll after that. I haven't been able to roll because of injuries right now, but and then I teach Monday at noon for jujitsu, and then I teach Monday night for jujitsu at six, mm -hmm. and then I come back Tuesday at noon for jiu-jitsu Tuesday night at four o'clock for kids two o'clock five o'clock for kids six o'clock for adults Wednesday eight and then I don't have to teach again until six o'clock tonight so it's like Wednesday and Fridays are kind of like my easy easier days you right, know right and I can put private lessons you know if I wanted to man I could probably stack a ton of private lessons up on a Wednesday and a Friday yeah and I wouldn't even have to do them any other day yeah right you know but Tuesdays and Thursdays are my busiest days, you know, with jujitsu in the at noon, and then I mm -hmm. got the four, five, and six back to back. Which right, it's tough, man, mentally. Yeah, no, and and um, I mean, you'll be seeing me here. Usually, I'll come every day around noon, uh, but I'll be attending a lot of the night classes leading up until uh, the end of July. Old tournament time. Yeah, tournament um, time. First tournament. Yeah. Nervous. Well, yeah, well. Uh, I mean, yeah, but I, I still remember well, the feeling of competing. Away, bro. So it's like, you know, yeah. like the closer yeah. you get. Oh, no, yeah, trust me. Like, I, So I've done it before on, on you know, just for like karate point fighting. But, right. you know, I went to nationals for that. Um, no big deal. I, I mean, really, it doesn't matter. Right. But, um, but, right. but like as, as far as the nerves go, like if I'm not nervous, I would be more worried. That's true. You know, because uh, I feel like nerves will, it's it a good thing. It elevates you a little you, bit. It gets exactly. the adrenaline going. You yep. need a little bit of adrenaline, you know. It's just yep. learning how to control that, you know. One exactly. Time, there's just Especially in something like this where you yeah. can literally have an adrenaline dump the first, like, minute and you still got, what, another four to go? Yeah. I was so. telling um, uh, when I was in Italy, my last fight in it, my last fight was in Italy, and that's mm -hmm. the fight that made me retire. I was like, dude, I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of feeling like this. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so uh, I'm done. <laughs> and But it was, you know, we get to Italy on a Friday morning, and I fight on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So Friday morning, I have to stay up all To adjust to the time. All day. Yeah. Stay up all day. I go to bed about 9 o'clock, wake up, got to start cutting weight that day. Start cutting Dang. weight and weigh in that day. And then uh, Friday, Sunday, we fight. And, and you know they picked us up early from the from the where our apartment where we were staying in picked us up an hour early i was just getting out of the shower like i mean i was trying i had a i have a whole routine you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. especially on fight day and like i'm in another city i'm trying to get my mind right but a lot of what i didn't control that night was my adrenaline you know like we were backstage fighting or warming up and stuff and the Italians, like, obviously, we don't speak. Oh, yeah, they're all watching they're you, They're all right? watching us, yeah. yeah. And I don't know if we talked about this in no, the No, we did briefly, and I remember you was like, and then the American in me really came out. Like, dude, I guess I you started talking. Yelling, huh? dude. I was like, keep watching, you know? I was keep watching, mother. You know, I was just <laughs> letting them know, dude. I was like, and I was, man, I was so angry, and I was letting it just, I was enraged me, mm. dude. But it was like they were. Doing it was all, all had to be on purpose, man. Like they the fights were going fast, and then they slowed down like so slow to where like I had been warming up for a while, and I kept going up and down all day long with my adrenaline spikes. You know what I'm saying? So by the time we fought, man, I go I take the guy down first round like right off the rip. I'm in side control. I'm feeding a Kimura, which was my is my thing, was mm-hmm. my thing still. And, you know, I have the Kimura locked in, and and for some reason I go around to get his back, and my legs are gone. Uh, you know, and I just fall off of him, and I, I and that's the beginning of the end. The end you know, yeah, fortunately, yeah. you know, I was I was able to make it past that first round, but, dude, I was exhausted, man. And it was just the adrenaline dump, man, and not – I didn't like, you know, the way I was feeling. I, I mean, most people, when they fight overseas, are there for a week. Yeah, right, to get acclimated. Yeah, yeah and that's what – I think – I know the UK is like five hours ahead. Maybe Italy's like six or seven hours. I think ahead. we were seven. I seven? can't remember. We were right outside of Milan, about an hour outside of Milan. Dang. But yeah, yeah. just not having a whole lot of time to, yeah, to but get it, acclimated there. Yeah, that sucked. Anyways, man, that's what a lot of people can't deal with is like it's compete when competing is the adrenaline response, yeah. you know. More so for me, like I was just talking to my girlfriend about this yesterday, the day before. I think it was yesterday. It's like, I'm scared of not living up to my own potential, like how I feel, right? Absolutely. Like, it's not necessarily like what how, what you thinks. feel or anybody else. It's yeah. like, if I, because I don't like to lose. I'm not a sore loser per se, but I don't like to, right? So, like, if I lose, I'm going to be really, really mad at myself yeah. because I expect... To, and I'm also not the, that type of dude who thinks I'm the best in the room. For Don't sure. get me wrong. Like, you I should am, always expect the best of yourself. Right, exactly. Like, I'm, I'm a realist kind of guy. Like, you know, I'll be the first to tell you if I'm not the best um, and probably the last to tell you if I am, <laughs> you know. But, like, when it comes to competing, and it's always been like that, man, if, if I fall short of my own expectations – I'm just going to be so And that's another mad. thing is, too, is having expectations, mm-hmm. too. You know what I'm saying? It's like – you don't want to go into a tournament not ha- having low expectations. You right. don't want to be like, all right, as long as I get third place or get a medal. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. If we think anything less than a gold, like that's doing ourselves a disservice. That's already putting right. the law of attraction in, into you know the process of of going towards what you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people can call that mumbo jumbo or you know invisible magic or whatnot, but it's like it's literally. You know, there's so many times where I was fighting a guy and I was like, oh, man, but what about his right hand or what about, you know? And that's it, what ends up happening because yeah. you've, like, started the process for for people. Right. You know, and you just – it's very – it's hard to think positive about yourself and, you know, and think everything good's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you have to. You have yeah. to be – try to your best to think positive thoughts. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, I've, I know what to at least when it comes to nerves, I know what to expect, right? Like, so at least I've been in that position before. Um, but uh, you know, this is a whole different whole game. Different thing, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, 
Well, it's a, they're going 100%. They're exactly. going to go 110 right. or 15% if yep. there is a thing. You know what I'm saying? The, mo- the, the red line is going to be... Err. So you just being more confident and doing the competition, you know, training as well that we have and redlining, you know, as much as you can, redline yourself. So that way, when you're in the competition, you hit the red line, you're like, oh, let's just... And another thing, too, like gears. whenever I come to competition class, just about everybody there has way more experience than me. Yeah. So, um, like, I don't I don't even know the guy's name. I rolled with him uh, the night before last. I think he's a brown belt. I've seen him a couple times at, at the Gi. Um, but, yeah, man, like, couldn't do anything on the Scott, guy. I'm maybe not sure smaller his name. dude? No, nah, he's a bigger guy? dude. Oh. Um, Tony? No, it wasn't Tony. I know who Tony is. Joey? Got that him. one I'm not sure. That's it, several different ones. Could be. He's could a bigger Joey. dude. Oh, Joey's not big. Um, but I was struggling and of course, like I better struggle. Like, yeah. you know, he's a brown belt. Um, Gary. N- nope. Not Gary. I know Gary. Um, but th- after the, the class, you know, is whenever I was talking to my girlfriend, I was like, yo, and, and really it was kind of me just, it was my inner bitch is really what it was. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready to compete. Like yeah. I couldn't even like do I this and that. smashed by a brown belt. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, then, gonna... but then the next day I'm like, yo, that dude's a brown belt. Like quit being yeah. a bitch. Yeah. You know, stop trying to find some sort of excuse not to do it. Yeah. You know? Um, so that I'll have a lot of those little wars with myself in my own head. I do that with everything. It doesn't even matter if I'm competing in something or not. Literally everything. I, I do that to myself. So, yeah. Um, but no, I'm excited, man, and and you know I'll be here. I'm coming back tonight. I couldn't do open mat today, you know, because uh, I didn't want to have to shower and everything after and oh, prolong I get this. It. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be back tonight. Um, is there is there a competition class tonight too? Or? Yeah, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'll do the regular class wrestling. at six, and then yeah, wrestling tonight. Okay, and then good. We got. So I'll be doing that, and then you know I'll be back tomorrow. All that good stuff, but um, yeah, it's good, man, and like, and that's the thing with if you want to do a tournament. Or you want to get better, you have to stay consistent. Mm-hmm. And you can't let the roadblocks, you know, kind of hinder you. And, you know, right. whether it's – now, I, I get it. Sometimes your job is like, man, there is no other way. I work 12-hour shifts like I couldn't make it tonight or whatnot. You know, it's like – but you just can't fall in that depression, which a lot of people have and I have. Yeah, You know, you fall into it. It's like, oh, I don't feel like going to the gym. I'm just going to stay at the house and watch TV. Dude, that turns – like next thing you know, you look back at the clock. It's nighttime. it's contagious. That shit will seep into every single day yeah, if you, if you allow it to. One man, if you and, yeah. and then you're not doing it. You're like, ah, I don't really feel like going to lift weights. Like mm-hmm. I'll just wait, you know. Yep. But it's like, all right. That's why I, when I was fighting and or when I have a fight coming up or a match or something like that, I try to stick to a schedule, mm-hmm. you know. So that way, when the depression creeps in. And whenever things creep in that are trying to rob you and steal your time, you know, I'm like, I have to go train Mm -hmm. right now. Like, there's no other way around it. So, I mean, when I was active duty, man, I'd I'd have to be at work. You know, when I was an instructor, it was really nice because I didn't have to be there until (laughs) 8 a.m. Right. You know, and I could go get a workout in prior. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have a class on the ground, or if we had a class on the ground, sometimes it's 5.30 in the morning, you know. Uh, if not, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if we didn't have a class on the ground or I didn't have to be in earlier, I could I didn't have to be in until 9. So I could go get a whole workout in. And we had our own, our unit, like, uh, uh, gym and everything. Hmm. Where was that? So I'd work out in the mornings and then go into work. And then I'd leave work and go right to the gym, do it you know, MMA or jujitsu or both. It was two hours, hmm. you know, that night and one hour in the morning, every month, every three days out of the week, I was doing three hours of training. And then every Tuesday, Thursday, it was only two hours of training. And then every Saturday it was just boxing or wrestling or, but there's also days where I'd have to be at the gym, uh, at five thirty in the morning, if I could make it and do my wrestling round private to my wrestling coach. Damn at five thirty. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that, Five thirty in the morning, man. Dude, no way. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. And I'm three hours a day, especially yeah. when you're training like jujitsu, wrestling. That and, is a lot. And active, and being in the military, man. Yeah. So there's no, man. I would find myself. I man, I'd go home and I'd eat really quick and I crash. 
I bet, yeah. Crash for like 20 minutes, man. And I wake up, I stumble back into work, you know, mm-hmm. and man, man yeah. it was, uh, but it's, it's tough, but like, it was my dream, right? right it was right, what yeah. I, it, I wasn't going to let anything stop me from, you know, trying to progress to be the best, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and no matter what it was, you know, if, if my kid, well, my, looks like you're coming, looks like you're coming to the gym. <laughs> yeah. You know, they ain't got nobody to watch you. You're coming to the gym, man. Yeah. You know, and I get it. Like, if you're in a weightlifting gym, you can't bring your kid unless they right. have, like, a daycare or something like that. But most places that are martial arts schools, they have a waiting area. We have kids every yeah. night that wait. It, and their parents that'll yeah. wait out there waiting yeah. on their kids to get down Make sure class. your kids are squared away, though, with their behavior before you, like, let them just sit somewhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And spilling crap everywhere and eating food everywhere. And it's just like, and you just leave crumbs back. Not saying everybody does that, but we have that issue. So, um, <laughs> I, one thing I think is pretty cool too, though, is, um, your son Bodie will be here. A lot of times, like, you'll have that little contraption on the edge of the mat. He'll just be sitting yeah, there jumping up and up down. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice every now and then when I'm, when I'm getting choked, I'll look over look and just over see him. He's, he's all like, happy ah. and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has no care in the world. No. I was putting him in his uh, in his um, car seat the other day. I was like, you have zero stress, my man. Like, zero worries. Like, yeah. like life is good for you. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He's got a good mom and dad. You know, we live really close to the beach. Mm-hmm. You know, things I've always wanted when I was a kid, you know? So it's it's really yeah, neat. and he's in a, he's in a really cool and unique spot too, um, because you know you have this academy and that kid's gonna learn from a young age. Like who knows, like who knows, fifteen man. years from now, yeah, how much of a beast Bodie is gonna be? Yeah, and who knows, man, for sure. And and who knows if like I'll even be his coach to start out with or anything like that. It's like because like a lot of kids more than likely you're going to be his yeah, first coach. Yeah, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm you're going to have that. He's going to be three years old out cool, there in the garage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's going to be it's so hard, you know. Like yeah. yeah, I get nervous now. Watch, you know, my students that are kids compete. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm in the match with them, dude. Yeah, and let them let some let another coach say something on the other side. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we're going to have some issues. Right. And right. I don't know how I'm going to be with my son, dude. Yeah. I, it's going to be – because I will. If we are at a tournament and there's an issue, we can handle it. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, like, Megan's like, Derek, you're going to – like, this you're, This is not good, you know. <laughs> you can't be acting like that. You can't be wanting to fight people. I'm like, well, if they want to talk shit, like, I'm going <laughs> to – like I'm not good at talking shit. I'm just not good at it. You know, the only thing my dad taught me, if you talk shit, we going to take it outside. Right. That's about it. You know, there is I wasn't very witty. I'm not very witty with like very comebacks and it's like, "Oh, your mom's fat." I'm like, "Uh, your Boom. mom's stupid." <laughs> you know, like I'm like not good. I'm just like That's one thing. All right, I've let's fight. Been- I've always been pretty decent at, which is, I think, one of the reasons why I've gotten in. Yeah, in the radio into, and different things. Well, yeah. no, I just mean gotten myself into trouble. Oh, it's because I can talk really well, but <laughs> you know, it doesn't always pan out the way I think it does in yeah, my head. Yeah. You know, but I don't really talk shit anymore. I don't really talk shit Me at all. Either. Yeah, you know, I'm just a just too old for that. I'm a cool dude, man. I just don't. I don't want any problems. But it's like if you mess with my team and you mess with my my tribe, you mm-hmm. know, or the people that I, man, we will have an issue. You know what I'm saying? I don't like anybody, you know, making fun of or anything like that, you know, or being mean to anybody on my side, you yeah. know? And so Understandable. that's, that's kind of a good part about, you know, being in the position I'm in and, and having as much knowledge as I do is like, I can back it up too. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So it's like, I shouldn't, I don't start fights, right? but like, if somebody's, like, talking shit, it's like, we got an issue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I've i never seen that part of you in person. Um, I've seen it on, on a video before. <laughs> like, uh, one of Jeremiah's fights. Like, after oh, the fight, you yes. started raging. Yeah. But, I mean. You know, outside the cage. I was like, okay, I'm coming out the cage. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to. But I've never, then. I've never. 
Never seen that part of DK. Man, the old, old uh, the athletic commission, South Carolina athletic commission was like, hey, we're not going to have any problems out of you tonight. Or I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. That's funny. Um, but, yeah, just to recap, um, consistency, obviously key in everything you do, especially martial arts, because if you don't show up and get that ass whooped, you're just not going to learn. Not going to learn. You're not going to be a humble person. You're gonna right. Be a- yeah. And you're not going to get better. I mean, not only you're not going to learn, like if you, you're you're just not going to. Uh, I don't know, man. It's like whenever you, a lot of times our parents, well, our fathers are teaching us how to swim. They just throw you, throw you in, right? That's like, what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Just throw me in, figure just, it out, kid. That's just how you got to. Yeah, a lot of times that's exactly it, man. Like I'm going to show you and I'm going to talk to you, but it's like really up to you to kind of figure out the way your body moves, the mm. position you can do and things. It's like, you know, it, it takes a lot of practice though. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, dude. Well, shit, you want to take us out? Yeah, man. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching us today. And, you know, in the past, uh, like comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, we appreciate it. You know, thank you so much for the support. Yes, sir. Till next time. Boom.